I've covered the greatest game of all time and the greatest rage quit of all time, but I've never covered my greatest game of all time. For that, we'll need to go all the way back to 2020 with the World Cup of Pokemon, a cheating incident, and a choice Scarf Hydreigon. The World Cup of Pokemon is a yearly 16 team event where every year the bottom few teams get relegated. They have to play in the World Cup qualifier tournament the following year and defend their spot for that year's main tournament. As you may know, there are more than 16 countries in the world, so the qualifiers act as a chance for any team to make it to the top flight. Also as a note, USA is split into several teams, and continent teams exist for players who live in countries that don't have enough players for their own teams, that way they're not barred from a big tournament purely based on where they live. One such qualifier team was Team India, the team I was on. India had never made it to the main tournament before, trying and failing in previous editions of the World Cup qualifiers. Part of that is just demographic. Nintendos aren't really a thing in India, so the competitive Pokemon and Pokemon Showdown pipeline doesn't really exist, and therefore there aren't that many players to begin with. But 2020 was a year of optimism. The format changed from having all generations of Pokemon to only Generation 8. Finding a solid roster of players was already tough given the lack of players, but it was even tougher when you had to find people who understood the meta from games from 2002. The 2020 format removed that barrier to entry. Coincidentally, I was also having a really good year in 2020, and Blimax, who is now a YouTuber too, joined the team and became one of our best players. The sun was shining and it was time for the underdog to strike, and it put us on a collision course with Team United Kingdom. The UK had been in the top flight since the beginning, but as of late they were struggling. The last time they made playoffs was in 2013, and in the 2019 World Cup they finished at the bottom, which meant they had to play in the qualifier tournaments the next year. In 2020, the qualifiers were a simple knockout tournament, with UK knocking out Argentina and India knocking out Belgium in the penultimate rounds. That set up a final best of seven. Whoever won the best of seven between India and UK would make it to the tournament, and whoever lost would be eliminated. And that set up my greatest game versus the UK number one in game one of the series. Also make sure to subscribe, we're almost at 100k subscribers which is the end of the month goal. It's free and doesn't cost you anything. I was playing game one of the best of seven versus High Impulse, the United Kingdom's best player. The meta at the time was very different from the meta we have now because it was before the DLCs came out. Also, Pokemon like Dracovish were not banned yet either. But first, there's one more character I have to introduce. Aquafinity. Aquafinity was a former member of Team India playing in the 2018 and 2019 World Cup. He didn't make the roster this time, but as a former player, he was still trusted and was in the camp and in the servers. Another well-wisher and pair of eyes who can give advice on team building and play test games if needed. Not really a security issue, until it was. He tried to leak my preparation and some of the Pokemon I was going to use to my opponent. Obviously leaking any type of information is terrible, but it's especially so in singles where people change teams all the time. Having a surprise factor with your movesets, for example, is a big deal that can make or break a game. He decided to try and leak that information to the other team. Now to UK's credit, they did immediately report the leak. Hey, we got some information and we don't want to play like that and we're letting you know that it happened. UK is not at fault at all here, they did everything right and reported it without question. Aquafinity would get a tournament ban for the leak, but it didn't change the fact that now I had to dump all my preparation and do something new. It was extremely frustrating to have this setback because this was supposed to be the year. UK may have been trending down, but they were still a top flight team and we were still the underdog. We couldn't afford to have stupid things ruining our plans. We only had one shot and this opportunity only comes once a year. Into the match, I ended up just defaulting to one of my favorite teams, a balanced team with Choice Scarf Hydreigon. My opponent would go with a sticky web team built around Choice Band Dracovish and other powerful attackers like Swords Dance Aegislash. Sticky web is a very offensive strategy and synergizes well with Choice Band and Dracovish to outspeed and one hit KO as many things as it can. My team wasn't too weak to Sticky Web, I had Levitate Rotom and Levitate Hydreigon, but I did have a lot of slower Pokemon like Clefable and Primarina which could get abused by Choice Banded Dracovish if played right. I lead Primarina trying to counter lead the Sticky Web Shuckle, but he predicts that and leaves Togekiss. 
Togekiss is completely shut down by Rotom Heat. However, he can predict the Rotom Heat and go to Shuckle to get off an easy Sticky Web. On turn 1, I predict him to go Shuckle, so I stay in to attack, but he goes for the Air Slash and flinch and gets it. At this point, I think, okay, maybe he's okay with the Togekiss versus Primarina 1v1. Let me go to Rotom Heat now. But this time, he goes to Shuckle on my Primarina as I go to Rotom, and uses that as a chance to get Sticky Web up. Basically, I got outplayed. He sacrifices Shuckle and then goes into the Mighty Dracovish. Even though Primarina is a water type, it literally dies in one hit to Fish's Rend. I switch into Ferrothorn who can barely take on Dracovish. He switches out as I knock off, and here is a very key moment of the game. Togekiss is completely shut down by Rotom Heat. On the other hand, I don't have a steel move, so my Ferrothorn is completely shut down by Togekiss who very likely has Flamethrower too. Dracovish is a huge threat, and if I go to something like Rotom Heat or even Clefable and they predict that and immediately swap into Dracovish, I'm gonna lose another Pokemon. I decide to go for a predict and predict his predict by using Power Whip versus the Togekiss. And it works. He made the Dracovish switch and I'm able to hit Dracovish with Ferrothorn. I sacrifice Ferrothorn for Stealth Rock damage, but now the Dracovish is basically out of commission. Now that I've managed Dracovish, the game is going to be about managing Choice Scarf Hydreigon. With Dark Pulse, Draco Meteor, and Flamethrower, it can do big damage to every Pokemon on the team, but the limiting factor is that I'm locked into one move every time I come in. The first time around I have Hydreigon versus Terrakion, and while I can Draco Meteor and knock out Terrakion, I'm also scared of them going to Aegislash or even sacrificing Dracovish. I make the U-turn play and go to Aegislash which has Air Balloon. He predicted U-turn into Aegislash which is why he earthquaked a Hydreigon, he just didn't predict the Air Balloon too. Aegislash beats Terrakion and he sacrifices Dracovish and brings in Bisharp and at this point it's a game of sacrifices. I want to attack more with Hydreigon than they can attack with Pokemon like Bisharp. I sacrifice Clefable because I don't need it anymore and I go right back into Hydra, this time threatening Flamethrower. He goes to Togekiss but it runs into the same Rotom Heat problem from earlier and again I predict him to predict me and I Flamethrower expecting a switch and he does, he switches to Terrakion. Even though Flamethrower does little damage to Terrakion, it's huge because it means Terrakion is now in range of Aegislash's Shadow Sneak and also the Life or Recoil from Terrakion is going to be all the more relevant. I switch into Aegislash for the Terrakion but he makes a really good predict and goes to Bisharp predicting the Aegislash. At this point, Scarf, Flamethrower, Hydreigon makes the endgame easy, but for good measure, I close combat on the Bisharp Swords Dance and it's game over. Aegislash finishes the job off and we win game 1 of the series. India would go on to win the series 4-1 and qualify for the World Cup for the first time ever, but that story is still being written. The truth is that the main tournament is just a little stronger. The plays are more sharp, the mistakes are more punished, the quality you need is higher. India would finish in the bottom 3 and get relegated, and just like how India knocked out UK in 2020, China replaced India for 2021. But in 2021, China also had issues with staying afloat and were one of the teams relegated that year. This time in 2022, India would again clear the qualifiers and make it back to the main, and China would get completely relegated, losing in the qualifiers. In the 2022 main bracket, India finished 10th to avoid the bottom 3. Brazil, Greece, and Latin America will now have to defend their spots in 2023. As for the UK, they still have not made it back to the main bracket, losing in the qualifiers in 2021 to Austria, and in 2022 to India again, coincidentally. And oh yeah, Italy won the 2020 World Cup in the end. While I think I played well, the reason I have this as my greatest game, more than the plays itself, was the narrative. I've played in elite tournaments like Smogon Premier League before, and I've been on teams that win a lot, and in truth merely qualifying for the World Cup isn't huge in the grand scheme of things, but this was special to me because of the adversity, of taking an underdog team that failed a lot and finally succeeding. That was more meaningful than any other game I've played. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching, and let me know what game you want to see next down in the comments below.